Peace be with you. Glad you were able to uh, brave the, the stormy weather out there. Uh, if you get really quiet, you can uh, hear that rain on the roof and give thanks to God that uh, the roof is working and uh, we're dry inside. But more importantly, we are here to, to receive the grace and favor of God as God's own sun shines on us, and that's what warms our hearts and keeps our minds in tune with what God would have us do, especially on this, I believe, second Sunday in Lent. Not of, but in Lent. And the only, uh, oh, uh, also hello uh, to our live audience uh, in the homes, too. I wanted to welcome you as well. Uh, the, the only announcement I have to make this morning now is uh, the announcements will be at the end of the service when God sends us out the door uh, to be his people in the world. Now we prepare ourselves for worship, listening to the prelude.
The service continues with the confession and forgiveness. So please stand and uh, remain standing through it all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, by the passion of your blessed Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
The first lesson is from the book of Genesis. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abram, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The word of the Lord. We now read the psalm responsively. Psalm 22. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. The Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither is the Lord's face hidden from them. But then they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The Lord shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. And may their hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their shall serve the Lord, and they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, The Lord has acted. The second lesson is from the fourth chapter of Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, But where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. 
hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words that was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Will the congregation please rise? The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Creator and the Savior, Jesus Christ, in communion with the Holy Spirit. Amen. What happens when someone tells you a disturbing truth, a truth that you just don't want to hear? Maybe you respond with denial, or you just ignore the information, or you argue with the person and try to make them see how wrong they are. In today's Gospel, Peter is like most of us. He is in denial and tries to make Jesus see how wrong he is, rebuking the teaching that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed and after three days rise again. And I can see why. Who wants to think that by following Jesus they might suffer and that Jesus is going to die? And Jesus' response is, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And Jesus follows this with, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Talk about a slap in the face to Peter. A rude awakening. I'm pretty sure that I would have responded to Jesus that the way Peter did. And Jesus' response is kind of a wake-up call to me as well. So what is this passage about? On the surface, 
Taken out of context, it may appear that the mission of Jesus is to suffer and die. But if we read within the context of the passages before and after this one, Jesus is letting us know that the mission of Jesus and his disciples is to give life. And this gets complicated and hard because of the forces of earthly powers that often violently oppose this. If you include the passages about Jesus' confession of being the Messiah and the transfiguration afterwards, the explanation of Jesus' death may be simpler and as profound. Jesus dies because powerful humans oppose both his healing mission and, more specifically, the disruption that mission brings to established law and order. Unbeknownst to Jesus', op Jesus opponents, they are opposing the inbreaking reign of God. So what happens when powerful forces are opposed, especially if those forces have been corrupted by money and are extremely powerful? The powerful forces do whatever they can to hold on to power and convince those who are oppressed and suffering that it's good for them. And they often become wealthy off of those who are suffering, a powerful sin that is difficult to point out if you're not very powerful. Jesus opposed the powerful, and the powerful eventually convinced the everyday Jewish citizen that Jesus should be crucified. And in this gospel lesson today, Peter sees Jesus as becoming powerful with his role as the Messiah. People were following Jesus, and not only is Peter afraid of losing a close friend when Jesus suggests he'll die, but saw it as an opportunity to wrest control from the Romans for control of the region. And this is one of the sins they faced then and we face today, allowing power to control us and use it to control others. And Jesus is pointing out to Peter, with the slap in the face, that is not what Jesus is here to do. If you look at it the way that Jesus might have, by coming back at Peter with, get behind me, Satan, Jesus is trying to slap the sin out of Peter and with Jesus' help, God is pointing to a completely different way of living. Living with humility. Serving others rather than taking for our own benefit. Allowing the kingdom of God to reign here on earth. And that we may end up suffering when facing these powerful forces. Jesus was not suggesting his goal was to suffer and die, but that the sin that Peter was promoting could cause great suffering and fighting against it could cause more suffering. What Jesus understood was that the system in place kept the status quo in power, and those who were suffering to continue to suffer, and that God wanted to put a totally different paradigm in place to care for those who were already suffering, and to teach people to serve God rather than themselves. And what about all of you? What do you focus on? Is your goal to make a lot of money and gain a lot of power so that you can have the freedom to do whatever you want, even if it causes harm to others? Or do you focus your energy on learning and living and serving others as God wants us to do? There are many ways to turn our focus away from earthly desires, to get Satan behind us, and turn our focus to God. And currently, in the Christian church, one way that we can do this is by observing the season of Lent. Not all Christian denominations observe Lent the way that we Lutherans do. So what does it mean to celebrate Lent? According to Merriam-Webster, Lent means the 40 days from Ash Wednesday to Easter, observed by the Roman Catholic, Eastern, and some Protestant churches as a period of penitence and fasting. Popularly regarded as a period of fasting, there are many ways to make the Lenten period more meaningful without missing meals. What is Lent and why should one take part? And does every participant follow a strict Lenten plan of rigid self-denial? Lent is meant to be a time of repentance, an awareness that sin separates us from God. We Christians honor the 40 days and nights following Christ's baptism when Jesus went into the wilderness and without water and food, he was tempted by Satan. And during that time, Christ did what we do today when we fast, wrestle with temptation. 
No church history indicates the year when believers first took part in the tradition or what was required. People observe Lent by doing some sort of fasting, whether abstaining from meat on certain days or only eating bread and water, or just abstaining from a temptation. Most often these days, people choose something to abstain from temptations, like, for example, not eating chocolate. In my case, and I know this is going to sound very silly to most of you, but I am abstaining from cookies. I love cookies. And when I'm eating out, I often get a cookie. And it is a huge temptation for me. By refraining from cookies, I'm denying myself the pleasure of that cookie and taking the time during the day to focus on God in a more intentional manner. And while it may seem trivial to you to refrain from cookies, it is a sacrifice for me because when I eat a cookie, I am focused on a pleasure to me rather than on God. So during Lent, every time I think about eating a cookie, I hope to turn it around and think about God instead. And this can be why Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Peter would know that what Jesus went through when he was tempted by Satan. So Jesus' comment to Peter is stating, don't be tempted by power. Keep focused on letting us know that that mission of Jesus and his disciples is to give life. In Jesus' day, the powerful in his immediate community were the chief priests, scribes, and elders. And unlike what Peter was suggesting, Jesus wanted to help people see how they could, break, could help those in need, not find ways to achieve power and wealth. When Peter rebukes Jesus because Jesus says he will be opposed by the powers that be and that he will die and rise, Peter is in denial about the truth that Jesus is telling him. When Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, Jesus is telling Peter to focus on giving life to people, not about taking power in the community. And while we don't read this in the Bible, I expect that Peter was crushed at Jesus' rebuke of him. Maybe all the disciples were. But Jesus wanted his disciples and those around him to see that while suffering may take place following Jesus, they are working for God to offer a loving and fulfilling life on earth. And as we observe Lent, we are repenting our sins, resisting temptations, and focusing our hearts on God and what we can do to serve God. And as Christians, that's all we need to realize with the reign of the kingdom of God on earth. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, one being with the Father. 
and all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all people in need. Your gift of grace is for all people. Give confident faith to all the baptized, that they may follow you wholeheartedly. Give new believers joy in your promises. Give hope and courage to those who suffer for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. All the ends of the earth worship you. From galaxies to microorganisms, preserve your creation. Teach humanity to wonder at your works and to join you in tending to creation's well-being. Lord, in your mercy. You rule over the nations. Raise up advocates for peace and justice within and between nations. Give life where hope seems dead. Call into existence new realities we cannot even imagine. Lord, in your mercy. In Jesus, you joined humanity in suffering and death. Reveal to all the depth of your love shown on the cross. Accompany all who suffer in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick or grieving. Bring vindication for victims of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Dawn, Kathy, Reverend Don Thomas, Andrea Burkhart and her mother, Rachel H., Carrie Boots, Sandy, Mary, Bob, George, Joe, Rob, Norman, Noella Fredrickson, Marge Nelson, Roger, Nicole Schlemmer, Freya Rupp, Brenton McCullough, Santo Colosimo, Lily McDonald, Jeff M, Kim, Jeremy, Mary Ellen, Samantha, and Donna. We now pray for those whom we hold dear in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. you made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. Bless grandparents, parents, and foster parents, and the children who look to them for care and guidance. Console those who deal with infertility, parents who have entrusted their children to adoption, and children longing to be adopted. Equip ministries and services to families. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We await the day of Christ's coming in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints whom you have called to take up their cross and follow you, that together we may find our lives in you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. By looking at the folks and waving, uh, share the peace of the Lord. And uh, also to all of you uh, behind that camera that just looks like an eye staring at me in the back of the room. And now the offertory. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. Let us pray. Merciful God, receive the sacrifice of our prayers and thanksgiving, and the offering of our lives, that following in the way of the cross, we may know the joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I'm reminded a bit of that camp song, and I'm tempted to sing it, but I won't now, but it's where uh, the word announcements is sung about three or four times, but it, it's that time. We've all been waiting for it. So first of all, uh, are there, uh, is there anything I need to know about? Uh, speak up now. Yes. Thank you, Mandy. Uh, I think we've uh, uh, got one up on the groundhog. All we have to do is schedule a snow event and it goes away. <laughs> so remember that for next year. Uh, today is the, the final day to order your Easter flowers, so do so. Um, that's exciting. Easter is on its way. Uh, there's a new member class uh, coming up on March 21st. Uh, uh, I'm going to be there because I'm one of the new members, but uh, if you'd like a refresher course or uh, get first dibs on uh, volunteers for your committees, uh, join, join us uh, for that new members class. Again, March 21st. I, I read up on uh, the, the members handbook, and uh, for the first time I, I realized, because I, every time I'd drive over here and I'd look up at the church, I'd see these two crosses, and I'd keep wondering to myself, what? What happened to the third one? You know, did, did we really say, uh, we're, we're going to forget about that unrepentant thief on the cross and just chuck it? But I found out it has to do with uh, the fact that uh, this congregation started uh, as one and then split and then came back together again. Uh, so that's the reason for the, the two crosses up there. Raise your hand if, if you knew that story. All right. And the rest of you now, now you know too. And uh, after the first service this morning, uh, someone came up to me and said, yeah, that's kind of funny. Uh, Harold Zion is known as the Church of the Double Cross. And I go, hmm, well, that's interesting. Maybe we want to put that third cross up there. We'll, we'll see. But anyway, um, Wednesday mornings, uh, 7 o'clock, I'm here to celebrate Holy Communion uh, for any and all who uh, want to uh, brave the weather and, and the early dawn. 
I look at it as, as a way of rehearsing, uh, practicing uh, to be here on time for Easter sunrise service. So it's uh, kind of fun. But it, it was neat uh, watching the, the sunrise uh, last Wednesday. Anyway, uh, always need musicians. Uh, the Lenten offerings are in the center aisle offering plate. Uh, all those gifts will be going to uh, Lutheran uh, World Hunger. And uh, we're, we're supporting the purchase of the greatest of all time goats. So anyway, way to remember that. We have our campfire hymn sing coming up on the 13th. And uh, let's see, property issues. I guess you can read through uh, the rest of the announcements there. Uh, we do have drive through communion uh, coming up uh, this Wednesday, March 3rd, from 4 to 6 p.m. Um, yeah, I, 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 I had to puzzle over that one, but that's right. We, we're coming up on the... A new month. Any other announcements? Anything else that comes to mind? If I confused you, let me know so I can clarify now. Yes. Yes. be needing small vocal ensembles for um, upcoming Sunday services and also I'm going to need for Palm Sunday and all three Easter services um, and I still need uh, some singers for the I believe March 10th today so if you're interested in any of those any voice parts any instruments please let me know uh, get in touch with me email or come on up and see me thank you so much hey, thank you well, if uh, you're ready to uh, take all that for action and get going, uh, uh, please show your intention by standing up and receiving the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. in peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.